Good morning, folks. Let me turn the radio off. So, this morning, we have holes to cut in the tanks, polish the insides up, and then no more, no more work on them. That's, that's the plan, no more welding work at least. So, when I say holes in the tanks, what I mean is, the fermenters, for instance, require outlets, which will pop there, and the boil kettle requires an outlet down at the bottom to go to the pump. Obviously, we're not going to recirculate from the CIP outlet down below. That we're going to use just for fully draining and cleaning. And then we need a half inch outlet from the pump, inlet, sorry, to go back in the tank. And then if we scoot on right around the back, you will see that we need an inlet for a temperature probe and an inlet for element protection, which is basically just a float switch which will operate a relay. And if that relay is not engaged, AKA if the float switch isn't up, no power to the elements. And that saves us hundreds of pounds from burning elements out. And the reason I've put the temp probe way up above the element protection is because if I need to add another element, I've got space here and I'll just swap these two around. Hey, eh? Up here for thinking. And then on the HLT, we've got six holes to put in. We've got a recirculation inlet to go in on the top. We've got the same gubbins on the bottom down there, a temperature probe and element protection. And then around the front, or should I say the side, we're gonna have a sight glass and an in and an out for the sight glass and uh, that will be it. So there are six holes in total, one, two, three, four, five, and then of course there's got to be the feed to the pump, which I think will just come off of a T on the bottom, you know, on the main, the main doodah underneath. So the compressor is charged up with air, I'm going to fire up the plasma cutter and we're going to ping a few holes into these tanks and then uh, cut some pipe, put some male fittings on there, weld them up, weld them up. fittings are on. I had to cut these two down a little bit because otherwise the uh, 
the sensor wouldn't be able to drop down the float level indicator. But yeah, that one, two, three, four fittings are on there. We've also got the two fittings on this side, one, two. That was a bit tight, so I had to weld it from the back. And then what I'm doing now is just hitting everything with the grinder, buff and polish all the inside, what I want to do, get it finished as I want it finished. And then this doesn't have to come back on the bench again. So just running around the edge so I've got a nice smooth edge, get rid of these little weld marks and smooth it off. That wants to be a nice smooth edge for the top to seal nicely on it. And yeah, like I say, once this is done, I will not have to do any more work on the inside of this tank and then we'll swap it over, we'll bring the next one up and we'll do that for all six tanks until they're all done on the inside. And then anything else I need to do will be external work, like insulating. But this has took me nearly all day just to do this one boil kettle, so I imagine there's a week's worth of work there to get all these other tanks done. And I've got, of course, to put the cooling jackets on the other fermenters, so that's a couple more days. So we're probably still looking at another two weeks, realistically. I know I said I would to leak test by Friday, and I could leak test, but then I'd have to dry it and uh, do any other repairs after the, uh, after the event, so I may as well do what I gotta do, and then we'll leak test in a week or two, I think. She's all packed up now. Temp probe, element protection, one element, two element. And then around the side, I've gone the long way. <laughs> I have gone the long way. Anyway, it's there, just here. Pump out, pump in. And then that'll allow us to take off end a whirlpool. Well, not quite whirlpool. If I want a whirlpool, I have to put another one of these on the inside here and then a spout down with a right angle so the, the wort would come and uh, and whirlpool. But it's good enough for filling and recirculating. So same again now. Same again with this one. We're going to have to do 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 Four, I think there's six holes in that one but two of them are going to be BSP fittings. Some rat weird shit on radio too at uh, eight o'clock at night. Mm, I've just had a jelly sweet and it's all stuck in my mouth. Yeah, stay till eight o'clock. Gemma's on her way to pick me up, she had the car. Got a mom. I'm one short. I was gonna block it off. So that's the recirculation inlet. And then I'm gonna have the fill, oh that's hot. I'm gonna have the fill level uh, float switch thing at the side of it. That's no good anyway. I just thought it's, uh, oh yeah, you're not bad. It's too deep. Can't have the, f the oh, anyway, I know what I mean. So tomorrow I will cut this off. I've got another one of those mail inlets. I've actually got it on a two inch, two inch and a half uh, concentric reducer. But I made this before I was any good at uh, welding. And the inside, which you probably can't see very well, is not very hygienic, shall we say. So I'm just gonna slice that off We'll fit it to a shorter stumpy piece. You see how those two down there, they're not as high as this one. So that's fine for the inlet, for the uh, fill valve. But if I want a float level indicator, I can only have a very short stumpy inlet because it has a flap that has to go up and down. You've seen them before. And when they go up, they make a circuit which sets off an alarm or closes a contact uh, or opens a contact depending on what you want to do with it. So that's the plan, any rude up. So just waiting for Gemma to come and pick me up. Tuesday, finito, time to go homo. Can you hear the echo? 
I'm sure the neighbours aren't going to be happy with me banging and drilling and grinding at 8 o'clock at night. So I'm going to go. See you tomorrow.